this is going to be a quick postscript of the modifications and and also go over um, sources for parts some details on doing the mod and then a little overview of the IPS power supply at the end. So here we have on the workbench we have two identical Aragon 47Ks and this one is the modified one that you saw in the first video and the second one is a completely factory stock one and I just kind of wanted to go over the differences of what we did again in case there was con confusion. So again, uh, the output coupling caps were replaced with these Ori caps, which are really nice. And, and I didn't realize, I think they're about 50 bucks a piece. I didn't realize that when I bought them. Maybe the price went up. I thought maybe they're around 35 or 40, but last I checked from um, Parts Connection, they're, they're like 50 bucks a piece. So th these are really a nice cap. And, and I really see it as the only option because of the slim chassis. You know, the best thing you can do is get one of these calipers and measure your caps out before you start buying stuff so you don't get bit by buying expensive capacitors that don't fit your board. So, you know, measure those out. So these were the factory OEM capacitors, right? And they're the same value. They're 10K, you know, or, or 10, uh, 10, um, uh, 10 mics, 10 microfarads. Let's see if we can get this to not blur out on us. 100 volt, right? So we went up, actually we went up a little higher. I thought these were a higher voltage, but um, 10 microfarads, 100 volt. And then the capacitors, uh, these little guys, you know, they're a, um, I don't know, they're just a generic Nichicon, I think. But they're um, 25 volt, 470, and we put in these audio notes, some nice audio notes, and increased, uh, doubled the capacitance, doubled it, went from 1,000 mics to uh, 2,000. I think that's what I said before, right? Yeah. So anyways, um, so, you know, so this is this is a completely factory stock one. You can see everything's the same. Uh, we replaced this capacitor with a Nichicon uh, Muse non-polarized. And, and then R10, R10B and R10A, we replaced with the, um, with a Vichet, Vich Vich I can never say that word, Vichet uh, Z-foil, which, it looks like that right there, and that's just an incredible resistor. I, I mean, it's like no resistor at all. They're like they're like the invisible resistor, right? They don't sound like anything. So, so you know, something you know, some people say that the loading resistors, these shunt resistors, these go to ground basically. That uh, these are going to greatly affect your sound quality. You know, and maybe you know. So, I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get exhaustive with this, uh, you could take you could take these shunt resistors uh, and you know put a z-foil in there you know so like I'm using a, a moving magnet cartridge a really nice one and uh, it it requires a 47k load so you know if you're using a moving magnet you you could replace that first resistor uh, with a 47k uh, 47k z-foil would be a nice way to go right and let me know how that sounds for you or if you're using a moving magnet cartridge, you know, I used an Audio-Technica, a really nice one, and uh, there's that 100 ohm. You could replace that 100 ohm if you, you know, are using a higher gain stage and maybe using a moving coil uh, if you want to. Now, now these are already, these are already Dale, I think, that are RN55s, quarter watts. Um, they're already really nice, quiet resistor. Uh, they're a metal film, so I didn't really bother with the loading resistors. But, you know, some people think that, you know, that makes... That makes the most difference. I, I kind of disagree. I think the the series components are going to be more. But you know, try if you try it out. If you want to do it, let me know. And also, this loading capacitor, uh, the little picofarad um, mica capacitor. Now, now somebody pointed this out to me. This is a two hundred and seventy picofarad, which is kind of on the big side for loading capacitance. Uh, on a phono preamp, right? So typically, maybe you might see about 100 picofarads, and this is 270. So, you know, depending on the cartridge that you're using, you know, you might consider, you might consider lowering that, and I wish we had some better lighting here. You might consider lowering that to a, uh, maybe I'll throw in a picture of it. You might consider lowering C1A to maybe 100 picofarads and put a nice silver mica in there, you know, just like what's in there. 
Um, I didn't do that. I left it at 270 because I think it sounds fine. But then my cartridge that I'm using, which is a Nagoa, uh, it has kind of a, a pretty high impedance. And it seems to do very well with the higher loading capacitance. So, you know, your mileage may vary. But that's, you know, that's one option. What else can I talk about? Um, okay, doing the mods. When you're doing the mod, you know, what I did is, you know, it, the board just comes off with these with these bolts. And you can actually, you don't have to unsolder all this stuff here. Just leave that be. And then what you do is you just... Um, you just lift up the board, unbolt it, lift the board up, tilt it up. What I did is put a little towel behind here because you don't want to damage these these uh, transistors with, um, with with putting it against the back of the chassis. So stick a little towel in there, you know, uh, decharge your caps, you know, empty your caps out before you start poking around in there because, you know what, uh, you know, 60 volts uh, DC or, you know, 20, actually they're about 25 volts DC. You know, whatever, I, that'll give you a pretty good shock. So yeah, you want to, you know, drain out your caps, use a resistor, or maybe I'll put a link. There's actually a really cool tool, which is a cap discharger that I found on eBay. I'll put a link to that in there. And uh, and you just tilt up the board, tilt up the board, and then you can do your soldering underneath, and then you tilt it back down and bolt it in, and you're all done. It's easy as pie. I mean, it's it's got to be one of the easiest things to work on. Um so I hope that helps. Um, and then one thing I didn't mention is on the back side, I'll throw in a picture of it here, but on the back side we did do a couple film and foil Solon bypasses on the underside of the board just to make it nice and clean. And I think they were I think they were a 0 .01. That's the only thing that would fit under this board. I tried a 0 .1 and it was just too big. So I had to go with a 0 .01. And uh, so we did some film and foil bypasses, and that worked really well. So more about caps. You know, everybody says, well, you know, why did you use these Ori caps? Why didn't you use some film and foils? And, and again, it, it's about spacing and size. Um, you know, sorry, I'm trying to keep this pretty steady. I know it's annoying to have these um, shaky camera movements and stuff, and I'm just doing this by hand. But it's really about size. So an example, you know, this is... This is a, a 10 microfarad Ari cap at 160 volts. And it's a pretty small cap, a really nice one. But an example, you know, here is a uh, here's a 10 microfarad uh, Solon, uh, a film and foil, right? And this is like a hundred dollar capacitor. Uh, but you know, there's there's no way you're gonna there's no way you're gonna fit this thing in here, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, the size it's just ridiculous, right? The same capacitance. And actually a lower voltage, but because this is a film foil and the RA cap is a metalized polypropylene, uh, you know, there's a, just a big size difference, you know. And, and I, I just, I didn't want to like mount it outside the box or stuff them in the side. I mean, that's, it's just, you know, if you're, if you're trying too hard, you probably shouldn't do it. That's all I'll say. Um, so what else did we talk about? Um, you know, we replace these, we replace those. Uh, oh, I know, somebody kind of wigged out and didn't understand why in the schematic. Why in the schematic they had 0.5, you know, like these are all 25.5 ohms, and then the output resistor is 47.5, you know. And, you know, why it's 0.5, I don't know. I, I didn't design the thing, you know. Uh, all the look, all the resistors are, you know, plus or minus 1%, so you can vary a little bit on the size. You don't need to get a 47.5. You can do a 47 or a 48. Or actually, you know, these audio note resistors, these audio notes that are in here, these uh, tantalums, uh, you know, I was a little disappointed. These were a little further out of spec. These were supposed to be 47 ohm, and I th think they were closer to 49. So, uh, but it's a final resistor, so it's not in the RIAA network, so I'm not too concerned about it, you know, but you can go with a straight 47 ohm resistor or something close, you know, give or take a little bit there. Um, and then the input resistor, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I had to order the, uh, the Z foil. And so, you know, I could order it uh, from Texas components and I could, I told them, I, you know, I just need 47.5 and they'll make it for you on demand. So. Like I said, you know, I didn't design this circuit. You know, my guess is maybe they got a deal on buying the resistors that are off by a half an ohm uh, or, uh, you know, either way, and they just bought them in bulk and and, and did that. You know, uh, it's all cost savings, right? So, 
I don't know why they did it, or or maybe it was maybe they put it in a spice model and looked better in a spice model or something. Who knows? But like I said, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to. You actually, it's really hard to find a, a forty-seven point five resistor, especially in some of the specialty stuff. So, you know, just do a straight forty-seven or something close for the output resistor. And if you want to do a Z foil, uh, you know, just you know, tell them you want. You know, I just I just ordered the forty-seven point five and did that. I, you know, I'm not telling you it's going to make a sound difference because of the point five. Uh, I just tried to stay close to the original designer's intent and what was on the schematic. So, um, gosh darn, I think, you know, I think that's it. I think we've just spent enough time on this. Hopefully I won't have to open these these guys up again. Uh, but I hope uh, hope you best of luck with your mods and your and your update. I think you know if you're if you're looking for a nice photo stage and you don't you don't want to spend two, three, four, five thousand uh, dollars for a high-end photo stage, I think you could really uh, really uh, enjoy a lot by getting one of these Aragon 47Ks, getting the IPS power supply for it, uh, and just doing a really simple recap and then maybe a couple little resistor and cap upgrades. And, and you'll have a really nice sounding unit. Okay, we'll go on, we'll take a quick look at the IPS. Uh, IPS, and, uh, Aragon power supplies with the covers removed. You can see it's the typical triangular uh, steel box. Although these ones do have the updated removable power cords, which, which I really like. You, if you can find those, that's really a nice bonus because then you can experiment with your own power cord and things like that or update them. Uh, I like the fact that they're removable. You could always modify one of the chassis and put in, you know, a uh, detachable outlet, IEC outlet and everything. But this is, it's already done for you with these, which is nice from the manufacturer. So uh, the other variance that I've seen is the transformer. Now, in this one, we have this really nice potted transformer from the UK. It's an Avell Lindbergh Limited. Uh, transformer. It's a really nice potted square transformer, and that's that's kind of cool. And then looks like you have some independent fusing here as well for uh, the maybe uh, the 120 and 220, I believe, uh, in this one. And in this one, uh, typically typically I've seen them more with this potted nice potted transformer from the UK, but this one had a toroid in it, and I thought that was really cool. I had never seen that before. But in this model, they put a toroid, so I don't know if maybe, you know, this was replaced at some point, but it, it looks OEM to me, so I'm not sure, but it seems to work great. The voltages are the same, and this one just has single fusing, uh, and then you have, you know, your, your capacitors and uh, and your regulation and your... Um, your rectification going on there. So, um, so this one we've already updated. So the original caps were these little, these little. Uh, I don't know what these are, but the original, the little uh, original voltage is a 35 volt 470, and we've upgraded these to the uh, 35 volt 1000 mics. Okay, and then same thing with the big ones. They use these little. Um, uh, these little 35 volt 3300 microfarad and we've upgraded the board to these CDMs and we've done um, we've bumped it up a little bit to 4700 mics same voltage 63 volts so uh, you know so these are a couple of nice transformer options you, you know if you can find one of these uh, they're great they use the same uh, IPS with uh, a lot of the a lot of the Aragon gear so the DAX the preamps um, all used the same the same IPS. So you know, if you find an old uh, DAC that has the IPS, and maybe you have a preamp that has the standard power supply, you know, you can buy the DAC and swap the power supplies and sell the DAC if you don't want it, and get the IPS and use the IPS with your preamp and just you know rebuild it. Uh, it'd be great to you know get some um, a nice um, rectifier in there, maybe some soft recovery diodes or something. But I haven't really done that. We just recapped it. Just recapped it and just increased the power supply uh, capacitance a little bit and put some nice Panasonic FMs in there. And uh, oh, look, made in the USA. You don't see that very much anymore. Um, but you know, it's just a nice basic power supply. It's just nice to have. And uh, and here is a copy of the schematic. You know, you can always uh, boost this up and take a screenshot of it. But there's a there's a copy of the schematic for the power supply, and they all end in these little little um, XLR go into the main unit you know and these are real sturdy i like i like the idea that they use these as a as a power adapter that's kind of cool 
So uh, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, just thought I'd touch on the power supply, give you a, a little idea of some of the variants. And, you know, I've actually seen these with some giant blue sprig capacitors in them as well, which is kind of cool. But but there you go. There's a little overview of the Aragon IPS, and uh, it's a nice little upward power supply, but that's what they look like.